What is the purpose of columns in the residential building? A column is a vertical structural member that is meant to move a compressive load. A column may transfer the load from a ceiling or floor to a foundation. Columns are often used to hold up beams or arches on which the upper parts of walls or ceilings rest, like in a ceiling or wall. In architecture, the term column refers to a structural component that also has certain proportional and decorative characteristics. There are pillars that compress the weight of things above them and send it to things below them. People have been able to build taller structures and buildings that don't fall down because of their own weight because of pillars. Structural columns are used to show vertical load-bearing parts in a building. Structural columns are also different from architectural columns in how they act. People who build buildings use structural elements like braces, beams and foundations that connect to structural columns. These elements don't connect to architectural columns. How to place columns in plan. As a general rule, columns should be placed nearby the corners of the building and at the points where beams and walls come together. Select the location of columns so that beams don't bend. Avoid beams that are too long. Avoid columns with a lot of space between them in the middle. It's known as a column layout plan when it shows how many columns and where they should be placed on the page. The distance between two reinforced columns ranges from 3 to 4 meters for small buildings to 6 to 9 meters for large facilities that need a lot of columns and free space, but it can be even longer. To build simple structures, a distance of 5 meters is ideal. The maximum span is 7.5 meters, and the minimum is 2.5 meters. How to determine the position of the column? Among them, columns should be placed at the corners of the building and where beams meet. Place them so the beams don't bend as much. When you think about how many floors there are and how far apart the columns are from each other, you can figure out the size of the columns. 230 times 230 millimeters for a single story ground floor slash G plus zero residential building, 300 times 300 millimeters for a G plus one building, 300 times 380 millimeters for a G plus three building, and 300 times 380 millimeters for a G plus four building. What should be the maximum spacing between the columns? There can be no more than 24 feet between two columns. Because 1 meter is about 3.28084 feet this means that there must be at least 5 to 7 feet between two columns. What is the standard size of a column? An RCC column should be at least 9 inches wide and 9 inches tall. It should have 4 bars of 12 mm FE500 steel M20 concrete and stirrups of T8 at 6 inches C slash C RCC columns should be 9 inches by 12 inches 230 mm X 300 mm for a ground floor home. In order to make columns, you can use formwork on all four sides or formwork on two sides and blocks on the other two. Columns must be at least 8 x 8 in order to be made. Bars with 14 stirrups spaced 6 apart should be the minimum amount of column reinforcement. Why RCC columns are preferred? Columns are important because they carry the weight of the structure, so they need to be strong and stable. It is important to ensure that they are aligned vertically so that the weight is properly transferred to them. The column shuttering should be strong enough to withstand the pressure of new concrete and stay in place while the concrete is being poured in. Innovation in Column Design and Construction BSB prefabricated construction process caught the attention of the industry when Broad Group built T30, a 30-story hotel building in Changsha, China in just 15 days with pre-assembled parts. The process starts with a steel structure system that is made in a factory, then it's put together on the job site. Flanges and high-strength bolts are used to connect the construction members. It has the advantages of being able to withstand a magnitude 9 earthquake, as well as being five times more energy efficient than a conventionally built structure. It costs between 10% and 30% less. Conventional construction on the site generates more waste than this process does, but less than 1% of it. Jean Gang, said Jean Gang, who is the chair of the awards jury and is the principal of Studio Gang. A tall building that is built in a different way is interesting, and this is a great place to start for the next step. There is a new carbon fiber hoisting technology called Cone Ultra Rope. Its weight and bendability make it possible for an elevator to travel twice as far in one shaft up to 1,000 meters kilometer. 
Silicone Ultra Rope is made up of a carbon fiber core and an epoxy-based high-friction coating. This means that elevator energy consumption and the size of the machine room and high-rise buildings can be cut significantly. There is less weight on ropes, which means less weight on an elevator moving masses, which is the weight of everything that moves when an elevator goes up or down. This includes the hoisting ropes, compensating ropes, counterweight elevator car and passenger load. This means that right now, elevators can only reach a single shaft height of 500 meters. At that point the weight and thickness of steel rope make it too difficult to go any higher. With ultra rope, elevators can go up to 1,000 meters without having to stop at a transfer station. This is the first time we've made progress on one of the holy grails of tall buildings, the height to which a single elevator could go before the weight of the steel rope became too much for it to handle. An awards juror and the head of the CTBA said that. Not at all. So, it isn't an overstatement to say that it's going to change the world. However, it's not just the ability to reach higher heights that is beneficial. Greater energy and material efficiency are also important. I hope the video provides you with a sound understanding of the column layout for residential building and its associated features. Please feel free to like, share, and comment.